Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Got another fun video for you guys this time. We're going to be talking about Tokyo Auto Salon. This is a huge car event that just happened in Japan over the past few days. If you don't know what Tokyo Auto Salon is, it's a lot like SEMA, which is a huge trade show that's held here in the United States in Vegas annually every single year. So it's basically Japan's version of SEMA. And it's epic, man. We got all of the best cars that have been in development in Japan over the last year that show up to this thing. All the major companies are there, all the new body kits, the new aero parts, performance parts, you name it, it's all there. And personally, it's one of my absolute favorite shows that I love to see every single year when it comes around because Japan is just at the top, uh, the top level when it comes to new parts for cars. Of course, I'm a JDM fanatic, so it's really appealing to me to see all the new parts that get developed for the Japanese cars. And so in this video, we're going to be taking a look at a good selection of the cars that showed up at Tokyo Auto Salon. And I'm going to show you the good, the bad, and the downright ugly, because not everything was so perfect. <laughs> but you'll see that in just a moment. So I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get right into it. All right, so jumping right in. First off, we got to talk about the Z's in attendance here at, at Tokyo Auto Salon. Obviously, you know I'm a Z guy, huge Z guy, so we're going to talk about this the collection of Z's without a doubt. The new RZ34 or 400Z or whatever you want to call it was the, uh, the talk of the town here at Tokyo Auto Salon and definitely for good reason. It's very, very cool. There's a couple of things about it that I'm not a huge fan of, but I am warming up to it gradually. The front end was definitely problematic for me at, at first, as I've mentioned in my previous videos about this particular car, but we are now finally starting to see some major, major new parts coming out for the car, and it is making it look a lot better than it does in stock form. So we're going to be taking a look at all of the new offerings, aero part offerings for the new RZ34. I'm just going to call it the 400Z. That's going to keep it simple. And obviously the biggest body kit here on display at Tokyo Auto Salon for the new Z was the new Pandem kit or Rocket Bunny, whatever you want to call it. Man, it is, it's very cool. It's very striking. It has a lot of presence to it, but there's also some things that are problematic for me. First of all, I want to say that this particular car right here that was built by Greddy and Trust or Greddy and Trust are kind of the same entity is what my favorite Pandem 400Z at the show by a long shot. This blue color that they chose for this thing is absolutely stunning. I love it. If I was to paint my car blue, it would definitely be something along these lines, if not exactly this. It has a kind of a really nice kind of aqua uh, tone in there from certain angles, certain light hits it, get a little bit of greens and yellows that come out of it, and then it has kind of more of a purple type of deal uh, in other lights. So it's just a very striking color and would pretty much make any body kit or any look on this car look amazing. So that's a great example of how the right color can really make any car look amazing. But as I go through some more of these photos, I'll give you a good, a good look at the whole thing, front, side, and rear. Really great looking car with this kit. I'm not going to say it's ugly or anything, but I definitely stand with everybody who says that they're not a fan of the square arches here along the wheels. I much, much, much prefer a round arch in the wheels. And this is obviously the direction that K Miura has been going with Pandem with uh, I think the last three or four kits that he's done with the exception of the new C5 Corvette kit, which does have round arches. He's really, really pushing for the square arches in this. Now, if you guys know K Miura, the guy who uh, developed Rocket Bunny, he is a huge fan of like classic American muscle, these types of type of American cars that would have had uh, square fenders and things of that nature. And so obviously that appreciation for those cars is spilling over into his new designs for his new Rocket Bunny kits. You can see the square arches also on the uh, GR86 kit that he released last year. And then he's got the square arches on some of his newer US domestic cars, such as the Corvette C8 has the square arch and the 2005 Mustang just recently. So square arch is definitely something that's going to divide a lot of people. Here you can see the kit in black. This is Cusco's offering of the new 400Z with the Pandem kit. Uh, really, really nice. Definitely prefer the blue color, although I am a big fan of black. I think the blue color is definitely more complimentary on this, but it's a cool looking car with this kit. Like if I saw one in real life, I definitely wouldn't be complaining or saying it's ugly. I just don't like the square arches. 
And the other thing that I don't like about it really is the shape of the front bumper. Now I know what he was going for. He was definitely going for a callback to the Genos, the S30 Genos type of styling in the front. But uh, I don't know about you guys, but I get like major Mr. Burns <laughs> vibes from this front end. Like I feel like it's, it's far too pronounced in the top area there, uh, just below the hood, and it's too recessed in through the bottom. Again, I know what he was going for, but for me, it's just a, a little bit uh, too exaggerated, too pointed, if you will. I think it's a little too thin on the top. If that was a little bit more chunky or he added a little bit more thickness through the, the upper portion of the bumper right there, I think that would really, really be a lot better. It would look really good. I also think it would look good if it had some kind of inlet or something besides these two little ducts that you see on the upper side portions there. The canard looks amazing. It looks great. I love that canard. But I think if that, that duct, that inlet that you see there was a little bit bigger, and maybe a little deeper, I think that would look absolutely amazing. So anyways, this is the new Pandem kit for the 400Z. Uh, if I were to rate it a one to 10, this one would get like a solid seven for me because it is a great, great looking kit, great looking car, and with the right color, this is gonna be a very stunning uh, car wherever it goes, whether it's a show or a track or whatever. I mean, this would look great drifting or whatever you want to do. I think this first photo right here from Speed Hunters is really the best shot because you really see the color so, so amazingly. The light's hitting it just perfectly where you can see those kind of aqua blues and greens coming out. So really amazing. I'd love to see a headlight eyelid on this just to give it a little bit more style. And uh, other than that, yeah, I think it's great. Plays into the side skirts beautifully. I like the little splitter in the front there. Looks cool. Let me know what you guys think of the new 400Z Pandem kit. All right, next up we have 326 Power's offering. If you guys know 326 Power, they're really, really awesome because they love to just have exaggerated style in pretty much everything they do from the wheels to the lip kits. Uh, they're really, really big in the Sylvia scene. As you can see here in this photo, they got some Sylvia action going on there next to this new Z. And of course, they adopted the new Z right into their portfolio as soon as it released and they had pieces in development for it right away and they were the first ones to come out with the crazy stance for this car the crazy camber as is the case usually with 326 they're the pioneers of this kind of stuff so you can see their offering for the 400z here it looks really really great the camber and this this dance and all that you know that's going to divide people it's uh, some people love it some people hate it so no opinion really on that i think personally it's amazing because that's what they're going for, you know, and I really appreciate that, that they're chasing after their their style and their passion for it, and they took this car and uh, fit it right into their passion, so I think it looks absolutely amazing. Uh, a little too much stretch on the tires for me, personally. I wouldn't go that extreme with it, but hey, they're doing them, and props to them for doing that. I think the lip kit they put on this thing is fantastic. It's simple, but it's effective. It gets the job done. They have their signature style of wing on the back there, too. Can't really see it too well in these particular photos, but it's a very, very uh, similar style of wing that you can see on the, it's kind of similar to the one on the Sylvia there right next to it as well. It's a very common 326 style wing that they put on this and it looks great. It really does complement the, uh, the new 400Z. So very cool to see 326 jumping right into the water with the 400Z here. I think it looks amazing. Moving on, we have Blitz's offering for the 400Z and Blitz is a company that's known for very clean aesthetic and great performance options, of course. A long-standing history in Japan um, of racing and all that stuff. And so it's great to see that they are still in the game here and they're adopting the 400Z. It looks great. This is awesome. I really love the car in white. I think it looks amazing. The black top looks awesome. Uh, and the lip kit is very, very clean. I think this is definitely in the running if I had one of these cars. Definitely in the running for what I would probably get for the lip. It plays beautifully into the OEM bumper there. And then they have that kind of like a side garnish there that kind of fits in. And there's there's this kind of this awkward line on the 400Z front bumper there on the sides where it looks like there should be a duct there, but it's, it's, not, it's just a body line. And so they've decided to go ahead and create a garnish for that little area. I think it would look better on a black car as opposed to a white car. I think the this garnish on a white car looks like it's a little bit too out of place. But I do know what they were going for and I definitely think it looks cool. The side splitter there on the side is really nice and subtle. It's clean as well. So really great example from Blitz. This one here is 
one of the craziest ones at the at the show for for sure. You may not look at it at first, but this is a full on drag car that Crooch. I've never heard of this company before, but it's called Crooch. They brought a 400Z drag car, so you have like a full aluminum front lip there that was built for the car, and then the rear end is just this crazy uh, drag wing that they put on there, and it's got an adjustable adjustable center foil, so that's crazy, definitely purpose built. Very interesting to see a brand new car like this already turned into a drag car with the massive slicks in the back. Just looks crazy. I'm sure everybody, maybe not everybody, but at least some people had this in mind the moment they saw this car is what would it look like with massive slicks on the back of it. Well, here you go at Tokyo Auto Salon, of course. Next one up is by Fujitsubo. This is a company that's also very, very long history in Japan, very well known for their performance parts, showing off their new exhaust system that they've already developed for the 400Z. They had it propped up in the back with the mirror on the ground so you could get a really good look at uh, their new exhaust system and it just looks good, it looks really cool. I like the, the livery, the color theme on this is really nice, the red and the gold stripe looks awesome and I like the wheel choice on this too. This is Gretti's other 400Z that they had in their booth. Obviously it's a stock body, no wide body kit, but you can really see their new carbon lip, lip kit that they made for it. It looks amazing, great choice of wheels as well and a really cool livery. I love this livery. It's kind of a, a mecha uh, technical type of livery with the lines and things like that. I think it looks great on the car. And uh, yeah, just a really nice offering from Gretti in stock body form if you're not into wide body stuff. I love the fact that we've already got a full suite of different types of lip kits available for the car. I know that a lot of people are going to be having a very hard time trying to choose which one of these lip kits to go for with this car. This one here is by HKS. This is actually a wide body car, uh, if you couldn't tell that. It's uh, definitely a cool looking wide body. I wish I could see it without this livery, although I like the livery, it's really cool. Uh, I wanna see what this wide body kit looks like without the livery because it looks amazing. Unfortunately, this is the only photo I could get of this particular car, but I think that out of all the wide bodies that I've seen so far, this one is if not my favorite, it's very close to my favorite. And there's only one other 400Z that I might like better than this, and I'll cover that one in just a little bit. A couple of other cool, really notable things about this particular car is the uh, the katana blade trim that you see over the window and all that is like a forged carbon, which looks really cool how they did that. And then the carbon wing on the back, that ducktail wing, is just absolutely perfect. It's not overdone. I really like the shape of it. I think they nailed it. And uh, just overall, probably one of my favorite 400Zs on display at the show for sure. I really like it and I'm very much looking forward to seeing a version without the livery so I can see those lines a little better. All right, this white one right here is by Cool. And Cool is kind of known as like a luxury type of brand. You can see an LC500 right next to it. They do have a GR86 kit available as well that they've just recently developed and so they're very low to the ground they make very very massive body kits i believe they had a super kit that they had on display last year when that car was very very uh, popular still it still is but yeah there's their 400z offering it actually looks really good i like it a lot i don't like the wheels on this one but if it had different wheels and wasn't quite so low had a little better fitment i think those wheels are too big and the style is just not not fitting but they always put massive wheels on their cars and to me it just kind of ruins the aesthetic overall. Uh, but the lip kit looks absolutely amazing. Very clean, all white. They, you can see they did the roof white as well, the A-pillars white, everything. And I would love to get a better look at this car with a better set of wheels that fit a little bit more. Love the lip kit though, it looks amazing. Side skirts look dope too. This one here was in the Rays booth. The lip kits for this car already are just fire, like straight up. If you're like a lip kit guy, you like to just keep it really nice and clean, you're gonna have no problem with the 400Z because they got a ton of nice ones. This side splitter here is clean too. I love that little winglet right there. This gold one is by none other than Top Secret. You probably would have guessed that right from seeing the color. This is signature Top Secret gold. And this is another one that really piqued my interest right away because it's fairly simple aesthetically. You can see they got a little nice vent added to the front fender right there and a nice little mini over fender on the rears and a, a super sick wing on the back. But other than that, it's fairly understated. 
Super nice lip on the front. Top Secret always fire with their lips. For me though, this car is definitely about seeing what they've done performance wise because Top Secret is all about building cars that are just absolutely beastly performance wise. And so I was very excited to see that Top Secret grabbed a 400Z and started playing with it too because that's really gonna show us the potential of these, these cars engine wise. So I'm very excited to see what they do. I love their offering for their lip kit. This is one of my favorite lips as well already, so I was very excited to see this car there. Here's another shot of it too. All right, and the one that I think most people were the most excited to see was the Varus offering for the 400Z, and it didn't disappoint. This obviously is a stock body version. They don't have a wide body version yet, and that's what I'm very, very excited to see. I wanna see their wide body version. They haven't released yet but I know it's in development. But anyways, this gives us a little taste of Varus's offering. Very, very classic Varus type of styling. Side skirt, the side splitter there looks amazing with that winglet. And the rear diffuser here is just amazing. It looks awesome. I love the, the red pinstriping on it as well. Just a very beautiful uh, aesthetic. The wing is, is very nice too. It's very similar to that HKS one that I really like. So they knocked it out of the park with the, the rear ducktail wing. Here's another angle right here. Uh, yeah, very clean, very nice. They decided to go ahead and keep the black roof and just do the white. You can see the front end here. Classic styling in the Varus lip with the canard. I mean, you just already know that their wide body kit is gonna be wild. They always come out with their lip kits and their subtle stock body stuff first, and then their wide body kit. If they do it like in a rising kit for this car, it's gonna be crazy. I think the 370Z arriving, a rising kit that they did and that'll give you an idea of where they're going with this. I am very excited to see. So far, one of my favorites. All right, and as I mentioned, there was one Z that was my favorite. If I were to have one that I liked more than the HKS wide body 400Z, it's this one right here. This is the Veilside 400Z wide body kit, and it looks absolutely amazing. I like it a lot. It's not perfect, but it's definitely a very, very beautiful car. You can see from pretty much any angle that they looked at every area of this car to make sure that it had that signature veil side touch to it. Starting out in the front here, that canard setup, very chunky canards, but very, very impactful. Uh, changes the whole front end, the whole signature of the front end quite a bit, and I love it. I think it looks good. The front bumper has been extended out through the bottom to have more of a, a presence on the bottom portion of the front bumper, which I really like although the top section is also extended forward as you'll see here in other photos of the car but the front end just looks absolutely amazing i would like to see uh, some ducks some some ducks on the side here next to the canards introduced into the bumper i think that would be really cool but it looks clean without them as well with just the canards you can see the splitter on the bottom there or the built-in splitter I, I guess i should say or lip uh, was it integrated into the factory grill beautifully has its own kind of vent design in it, looks awesome. And then right around the headlights, you can see they also developed some new body lines on, along the sides of the headlights flowing back into the fender, which is just fantastic. It really makes the headlights pop out. And that's one of the things that was bothering me a lot when this car was first revealed was the headlight design. And this really helps to alleviate that problem quite a bit. And the fender itself is just fantastic. I love what they did. They kind of did a little bit of a Porsche type of action with the fender vents in the back and where it kind of comes down behind the front wheel there. And then they kind of cut it off in the middle. It looks really cool. I like how they decided to do that. Although I do think it would look really cool if they would have brought that all the way down to that body line there at the bottom. Um, I think it does look cool there at the side. This is another car that I think would look amazing black. If everything was black, it would just be incredible. But yeah, really beautiful fender design. I don't know how much wider than stock it is, but it is wide body. It may not look like it's, it's a wide body kit, but it is very, very subtly wider. That's kind of Veilside style. Like they, it's, it's interesting with them because they're either so crazy and wide and everything, or they're very, very subtle. There's very little in between with Veilside. So this is one of their cars where they're a lot more subtle with the adding the extra width. You can see on the rear quarter panel there, 
it really looks like it's stock body, but there is a, a small over fender on the rear quarter panels. You can see the rivets here on the side. And as far as I know, as I was reading into this car here, this actually does not require that you cut the factory body at all. This is actually a fender that you lay right over the quarter panel without having to cut anything. And it allows you just to run a slightly larger wheel and same deal with the fronts. I think the front is just an entire fender replacement and it's, um, it fits beautifully with the front bumper as well. Just a slight exaggeration from the, the factory width. And uh, the side skirt looks amazing too. It's really my favorite so far of any of any designs that have come out for the 400Z. The canard and that vent that comes out in the back just at the base of the rear fender, over fender, just looks fantastic. And I also love that little fin right in the front section of the side skirt. That's very reminiscent of kind of like what I did with the Excelsior side skirts. I put that little fin in the front there, so I'm a huge fan of that. Uh, definitely right up my alley for sure. Um, the rear end of the car, you can see here as I go back to this photo here, is very, very nice because they've got this new integrated ducktail into the thing that just flows right off of the new over fenders that they made for it so it just looks fantastic it doesn't look like there's a wing that's been bolted onto the back of it it looks very nice and tasty and they have these kind of interesting black wing stands they look like wing stands although they're, I don't believe that there's a they're intended to have a deck on the top I think it's just those those two wing stands that they're experimenting with yeah, I keep calling them wing stands but they're more just like little fins that they put and I don't know how I feel about those. I'm, I'm a fan of experimenting and having fun and trying stuff, but those look a little, a little awkward to me. Uh, it really looks like there needs to be a foil on the top of those. I'm not going to say wing stands again. I'm going to say fins. I think it would look better if those weren't there because that ducktail is just so beautiful. Yeah, I, not much to complain about on this thing at all. You can see they got a very subtle little roof spoiler, it looks like there too, on the top of the, the rear glass. I don't know if that's factory. I don't think it is. Uh, but they put a nice little roof spoiler on the top, which looks phenomenal. And then you can see in this photo right here, they actually did katana detailing, like folded folded steel detailing on the katana uh, trim here, which is just amazing. That's a veal side thing for sure. They're all about those little details. The hood has their logo uh, just kind of printed on the center portion of their logo. It looks really cool. But yeah, great looking car. I do like the color. I would like to see it in black. Right now, this is the most beautiful version of this car. There's no doubt about it. I would like to see the HKS wide body in something more like this, more subtle color, but man, this is just fantastic. And if this gives us an idea of the future of these cars right here, man, we have a lot to look forward to. Okay, moving on from the 400Z stuff, let's take a look at some of the other cars. Let's look at Liberty Walk. Now, Liberty Walk was a huge presence at the show. I dare say maybe the biggest presence at the show because they had one particular car that was very, very highly anticipated and you will see that in just a moment. But starting out, here is their new FD RX-7 GT style kit. Uh, don't like it personally. It's wild for sure. I guess that's what they're going for these days is just those extreme GT type kits that they've put on the S15 and the R34 and the GTR, the R35 recently. I don't like any of those, the silhouette kits or whatever they call them. I just don't like them. I, I think that they're, they're a cool throwback to these type of boxy, old GT car style you know kits but for me it's just it's not my style it's, they're, they're not bad they're not ugly necessarily they're just not my style and so this is their our new RX-7 offering that they've done and uh, it was cool to see it for sure this is the car that everybody wanted to see this was uh, Kato's passion project over the last year he'd been teasing it off and on throughout uh, 2022 it is an F40 that he has turned into a, a typical Liberty Walk wide body car. Uh, he did a great job on it, I'm not gonna lie. Like this is a great looking car. Any angle you look at it and what he did with the headlights on this car really was the, the winner for me because the F40 is, of course it's a classic, legendary car, no doubt about it, but uh, the headlights on that thing were just always atrocious to me. And I think a lot of people would agree with me that they were not doing that car any favors at all. The headlights did not age gracefully at all. But what he did with the headlights by turning them into more of a sleek light 
it made the whole car look way better. And so I really love what he did with the wide body here. Perfect shape on the rear fenders in my opinion. Side skirts look amazing as well and the rear fender was extended out just enough. So I really love what he did. I know he's gonna get a lot of flack from Ferrari purists for doing anything to this car, but hey, leave the man alone. He's having fun. So I think it looked amazing and people really enjoyed seeing this car there. So here's a back shot of it. Crazy action in the wing. He just There's no area of the car that's been left untouched. So he had a lot of fun with it and it was good to see the car there. Of course, they had their typical offerings of GTRs and uh, previous kits that they've done for various Ferraris and supercars, things of that nature. Lamborghinis, of course, huge with Liberty Walk. Uh, we had a nice selection of all of that on display here. Their GTR Liberty Walk kits have always been great. I've liked them, especially the version two Liberty Walk GTR kit. I really like it. Again, I don't like the silhouette kit. I think it's just way, way too boxy. But um, their GR86 kit is amazing, especially the front bumper. Here's their offering for the C8 Corvette. Very nice, I love it. That's my favorite wide body kit for the C8 Corvette thus far. I like this way more than the Pandem kit with the square arches. F355, very similar simplistic type of flare that the GR86 had. The F355 is, is probably one of my favorite Ferraris. I don't know why, just ever since I was a kid, I've always liked this particular Ferrari. It's just cool. To me, it's low, kind of reminds me of an MR2 a little bit, and I loved those cars back when I was a kid. Here's the front bumper on the GR86 kit that I was talking about. Looks absolutely epic. I mean, amazing. I'm gonna tell you, when the new GR86 came out, I was not a fan. I thought that the previous ZN6 generation was superior. I thought the headlights were better on the old one. I thought the taillights were better on the old one. And so I didn't think that really there was going to be anything to save the new GR86, but I'll tell you what, between this front bumper right here and uh, the Voltex and the Varus front bumpers, the kits that they've made for this car, which you guys are going to see in just a second, this car has, I've completely changed my mind on this and it's way better than the old generation now. Not that I don't like those cars anymore, I do. But the new ones now with these new kits that they're coming out for, oh man, these things are nuts. So I really, really love the shape of the Liberty Walk front bumper on this thing and it looks just amazing. I mean, the fenders look dope. Uh, this color, the black and the white is so, so nice. Uh, the panda, panda type of theme. Like, just look at that. That is just, man, the front bumper is clean on that. Very, very nice. You can see some slight similarities to the uh, the Excelsior kit that I'm building for my Z in there. So you could really start to get a feeling of what my style is as I comment on some of these kits here. Very, very beautiful. Really, again, from any angle on that thing. That is clean. Not going to lie. I love the shape of it. So Liberty Walk also had a couple of other cars. This was a really cool old school Hakko Ska that he had there. Kind of an old... Kanjo Racer style, it was really cool to see that. Uh, here's another Liberty Walk wide body GR86 in a crazy uh, painted carbon type of a, a livery, which looks really cool. I liked it, I wanted to throw it in there just so you could see some, some variation on it. But yeah, Liberty Walk had a huge presence at the show. They did not disappoint. All right, moving on. We're just gonna go through a few more of these cars here that were in attendance. No particular order here, but these are some of the cool standouts that I wanted to comment on. First up, this FC right here. Really amazing, not necessarily stylistically, but because it has a four rotor, naturally aspirated engine in it, it just looks amazing. I imagine it sounds incredible as well. It's very cool to see that there are still these older classic models of these beloved cars that are still showing up at Tokyo Auto Salon in 2023 with really cool engine builds like this. Just amazing, it's great to see that. This one here is just a Corvette C7, obviously, custom wide body. I don't know what booth or where, who this car belongs to, but I wanted to point out the paintwork on this thing. Just look at how insane the paintwork on this Corvette looks. Could you imagine if I was able to do something like this? Not necessarily red, but uh, the paint technique for the Excelsior kit. Man, I think that would be absolutely incredible, but this just kind of shows me what's possible out there. So it's really cool to see. This was a funny photo I definitely wanted to share. It's just a giant grill in BMW's booth right here. I think that they're kind of 
kind of on to the running joke with BMW that their grills just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so they just said, oh, let's just make an entire wall of our booth just a giant grill. <laughs> it definitely made me chuckle. I was glad to see it. And it uh, tells me that they're lighthearted over the whole thing. So I just thought I'd share that. It's so funny. These are probably two of my favorite cars at the whole show. They're very simple, but uh, they're just your classic Japanese um, tuner cars, like the perfect image of what a Japanese tuner car is in the spirit of it. This is, of course, a Siladia 180SX with the Silvia S13 front end, and then we have an S15 behind it there. But the body kits here are by Car Modify Wonder and uh, Haruyama, who runs Car Modify Wonder. He's a one-man show. He makes all these kits by himself and he's well into his later years of life. So the man is just so impressive to me. Uh, being somebody who, who does this kind of work as well, I respect the man so greatly. And he's got some of the best looking body kits that you can find for the S chassis in the world, in my opinion. And so I was so, so happy to see these two cars here. The blue Salady is owned by uh, Sayaka is her name. Uh, she's a, a pro drifter in Japan. Epic, I follow her on Instagram. She's so cool, so fun. And this is her personal Salady. She's actually like the real life Mako from Initial D. This car was modeled after the Salady in Initial D, if you guys remember that. The S15 also has a Car Modify Wonder body kit on it. And um, my buddy Daniel from SS Works actually used to have an S15 with the first Car Modify Wonder body kit. It was the same one that you see here on the red S15. I actually got to see an S15 with this kit in person when he had that car. He's since sold it, but uh, just absolutely blew my mind the first time I saw that kit. And I actually, a little behind the scenes here, actually took a lot of styling cues and a lot of inspiration from the Car Modify Wonder S15 kit that went into the Excelsior kit. So that just goes to show you how much I appreciate that these cars were there. Next up was this crazy carbon Corvette C6. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that you can expect to see at a Tokyo Auto Salon or like a SEMA. Just absolutely insane. This entire car was carbon, but it has that Japanese feel to it. So it's got the it's got the work wheels on it and everything. It just it was just so crazy. The presence of this car was nuts. This is something that you would see in like Tokyo Extreme Racer. I've mentioned this in previous previous videos that I grew up on that game, you know, it was like Gran Turismo and Tokyo Extreme Racer or Shitoku Battle as it was known in Japan. And these were the type of cars that you would see rolling down the, the Wangan. And so it's so, so cool to see these cars in real life. Next up for you Honda guys, we have Honda's new FL5 Civic Type R. Uh, this car is getting a lot of talk right now. People are so excited about this car, of course, for good reason. A lot of Honda fans out there, including myself. I grew up with Hondas, much like many others, and so I will always have a soft spot for Hondas. I'm definitely more of a Nissan guy now, but I, I so, so appreciate that uh, Honda is still rocking and rolling with the, the Civic, and uh, you know, say what you will about the styling. I'm not a fan, personally, of the direction they've gone with their newer cars. I loved the FK8 Civic Type R. I think that car looks and performs epic. Yeah, but the new one, the FL5 here, the moment I saw it, this along with the new Integra, uh, really bummed me out because I think they, they missed it by quite a margin, at least in my opinion. I know there's going to be a lot of people that will disagree with me, totally get that, but um, I'm not a huge fan of it. But you can see here, this one is looking really nice because this is the new Mugen version of the FL5 Civic Type R making its debut at Tokyo Auto Salon, and it looks dope, I will not lie. In this form, this car is passable for me, for sure. Like stock form, mm, not gonna do it, but the Mugen wing, the new lip kit, the Mugen lip kit on it looks fantastic. I love the carbon hood on it. It looks, it looks really, really good, not gonna lie about it. We also have a version here from Varus. This is Varus's offering. Of course you knew Varus was gonna jump right into the, the new Civic platform and they have their own lip kit for it which also looks really good. I think the Mugen one looks better, but uh, the Varus one definitely is no slouch. I do like the Varus wing too. That looks really, really cool. But uh, if I were to choose between this one and the Mugen, it would be Mugen all day. Also, we had this bad boy. This is a full-on Civic Type R race car that they've developed. This is the car that is now replacing the NSX in the Japanese GT circuit. Uh, so really crazy to see a Civic, full-on blown Civic race car 
but it really goes to show you how much Honda is paying attention to the Civic platform. They still are really, really dedicated to the Civic platform, and I'm very happy to see that. Absolutely epic. I mean, this thing is full-on race car, so really, what can you say? There was two Hachirokus, uh, classic Hachirokus in attendance at the show that were really remarkable because these two cars, this one here that you're seeing now is 11, and then they also have a, um, <clears throat> a Trueno with the pop-up lights. But these cars were actually built by Toyota. And it was just so refreshing to see Toyota bringing two examples of these this classic beloved car back. And they're very notable because the Levin here is actually uh, an EV. So it's now an electric, full electric car that they've completely converted it into an electric version. You can see the the back of it here so they refreshed everything they refreshed the chassis uh, you can't really see it in this photo here but the the body lines are all carbon the little over fenders there are carbon and of course it's got the watt wheels the watanabes you can't go wrong with those on the hachiroku and the trueno on the other hand is a hydrogen powered car so this is absolutely epic Toyota coming out with two Hachirokus with two forms of different technologies to run these cars. And we know that unfortunately we're moving into a future where internal combustion is, is going out, you know. I really hate to have to say that, but within the next 10-15 years, it's going to be very rare to find anybody making internal combustion cars anymore. So I really like seeing these cars because it gives you a little little glimmer of hope that if worse comes to worse and we have to run hydrogen or EV power plants in our cars it's possible to still use these these old chassis that we love and just convert them over as much as I don't want to give up my internal combustion and all that. There is hope for us to at least drive uh, some form of these cars that we love in the future. So this was really, really nice to see. So we have the H2 and the EV version of both of these Hachirokus, both, again, built by Toyota. So this was absolutely epic. This car right here, I don't know what booth it was in, but it was right next to that carbon Corvette. This is the, a sick Hako Ska. I mean, this thing is just epic. It's got the carbon doors, carbon hood, the Watanabe wheels, of course, perfect fender flares on this. Uh, I, just, I just had to show it because it's just so epic. Like when you see one of these cars in real life, and I have seen one, it's crazy. Like pictures are dope, but man, the presence these cars have is no joke, so I just had to share this one. It's just perfect in my opinion. It doesn't get better than this. There was also some other really cool cars on the outskirts, like we had a really cool Fast and Furious themed Eclipse there with the livery and everything. It's got some wide body flares, which is very rare. You don't see wide body Eclipses like almost ever. So it's really cool to see a wide body Eclipse next to a really nice NSX there too. I didn't get too many photos of the NSX, but... Um, really nice clean NSX NA2 it looks like back there so yeah very very nice uh, collection of cars here on the outskirts and that's one of the things that I really love about shows like this is you know some of the cars that are not center stage they're kind of more off to the side are just really really cool so that's a, a cool pairing right here this is a dope drift car it's his garage marine 2j powered s15 as far as just like straight up aesthetic this is like top of the top for me of like the Japanese style. It looks so good in that green. That body kit is just incredibly clean and the wheels. I mean, this, this is a perfectly executed car. I will say that the 2J in the Nissan chassis is just not my thing. Like I'm way too much of a purist to put anything except for a Nissan engine in a Nissan car. And I get a lot of flack about that, like especially putting like an LS and stuff. I hate LS swaps, guys. I'm not going to lie. Like. I just, anyway, that's another video altogether. But anyway, I did like this car because of the aesthetic of it. Here is HKS's offering for their wide body GRX, uh, GR86 kit. Looks really cool, although you can't really see the body lines very well under their classic livery. It looks really nice, but again, I wish I could see it without all that. I suppose I could if I, if I searched online, but uh, it looks cool. They also had their R32 race car course you see this car a lot I'm so glad HKS is bringing it back and showing it a lot because it's just such a historical epic epic car this is of course Ken Block's S1 e-tron the Hunatron and man of course this thing had a lot of presence there because Ken Block unfortunately passed away earlier this month which just really shook the auto community including myself quite a bit so this 
course drew a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of folks, and uh, very, very emotional to see this car there for sure. That man will be sorely missed. Here's a look at the other side of Cool's booth here. You can really get a good look at their wide body offering for the GR86. Like I said, their kits are so low and exaggerated. Like It's not for me, but uh, I, I like that they have a theme and it's consistent across all their cars. Here's one of the nicest FDs at the show in my opinion. This one is very popular online. This is by Looking and it's just incredible deep shade of candy red with a super smoothed out nice wide body. Another example of that perfect Japanese aesthetic. You know, you're not going to see this anywhere else outside of Japan, really. I mean, very rarely at the most. So very nice to see this car there. This was a crazy car that caught my attention right away because you can tell that this is like a Miata. This is an MX-5, but it has that old RX-3 front end. So this is a, an MX-5 that's been converted into an RX-3, classic RX-3 look. And it was just crazy to see that they're still having fun over there in Japan, mashing these cars up with the old classic style. So it was really cool to see that. Here's the Pandem C5 Corvette kit. This is really cool because they kept the round arches on this. They didn't go the square arch route. And you really can't. I mean, you got to understand the C5 is, this is the, the, the US car that's compared to the RX-7. And there's really no other cars that emphasizes roundness and curves like the RX-7 and the C5 Corvette, the beauty of the, the roundness of the body uh, could not have been ruined by square arches. I mean, could have been ruined, but thankfully, Mira decided to go ahead with the round arches. So it's a very, very nice kit on the C5 Corvette. Unfortunately, I don't have a picture of the front bumper, but there was one of these at SEMA as well. It's a great looking front bumper. I think it looks cool. Super clean Riddick Supra in the Project Mew booth always love seeing these cars this is another car that i first saw in tokyo extreme racer fell in love with it right away uh, this was my brother's favorite car i mean it still is to this day he 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 loves the supra the riddick supra stardust factory fd convertible they went ahead and chopped the roof off of an fd here i don't like it personally they kind of left the back that this little section back here behind the seat they should have chopped that too they should have gone all the way but um interesting to see it for sure Beautiful looking body kit, Ari Amamiya booth right there. So it's got the Ari Amamiya headlights and the uh, the body kit is just one of my favorites of all time on the FD. So it looks good, I just don't like the convertible deal. This is another really great looking FD. I've seen this one a few times too and just it, it's just beautiful. This is like top, top level FD stuff if you're gonna do this. Another look at the Ari Amamiya booth. So glad to see them rocking and rolling for sure. Ari Amamiya is kind of like a brand that you would expect would be a little bit more behind the scenes, a little more quiet. Uh, they specialize in rotary and Mazda stuff. So I'm so glad to see that they're still still very active, both in the in the tuning scene and the show scene and all that. I'm so happy to still see Ari Amamiya. There was also this FD right here with the full Porsche front end. Just crazy. like. Crazy. I love the FD headlights, so this is going to be a hard sell for me, but again, I love the fact that the Japanese are still having fun doing conversions and stuff like that. Like, you don't see this stuff in America. This is only Japan. They're still doing the conversions like they have been since like the early 2000s. So it's just so dope to see this. Star Road brought out a couple of really nice S30Zs. These cars will just never go out of style. They're just timeless. Whatever a timeless car is, you're looking at it right here. Beautiful. It's got a nice blue on both of these as well. Kind of close to that blue that we saw on the Pandem 400Z a little earlier. Beautifully executed here on these classic S30s. Now this R34 GTR is owned by a guy on Instagram. He goes by Tom Jerry 34 I've been following him for a long time and he used to be one of my favorite R34s on the gram. And I say used to because unfortunately he or fortunately, in his opinion, and, and maybe some others, but he did this crazy thing with his fenders, and you can't really see it in this photo here, but as I go to this photo, he took his fenders and he exaggerated the corners of his fenders so much that it literally looks like it's got wings on the side coming out of the fenders. And that compared with the, or in conjunction with the Lamborghini doors, it's just, this is not what that car is about by any means. like. It's way too much 
I'm sorry. And people say I've done too much with the Excelsior kit. No, like it just ruined for me personally. This is just me. It ruined the R34 uh, fenders because he did the custom vents on his fenders that you can see there, the carbon, the carbon vents, the GT style, and it was just that with like the Z-tune edges, and it was perfect. And then like last year, he came out with this like super exaggerated wings on his fenders, and to me, it just ruined the whole car. It was really sad to see, but. He still gets lots of attention. Props to him, I wish him well. It's a, it's still an R34 GTR, I just don't like the fenders anymore, so. Anyway, moving on, here's another look at Top Secret's booth. Of course, they had their GTRs there as well. Top Secret, very well known for their GTRs. If I was to do an R35 build at some point, I would definitely tap into some Top Secret parts for sure, because they're top, top of the line. There's no doubt about it. Beautiful cars. All right, and uh, getting toward the end here, this just barely edges out the Liberty Walk front bumper on the new GR86. This is the Varus Arising uh, wide body kit for the new GR86 that debuted here at Tokyo Auto Salon. And this thing is incredible. It just looks amazing. It's, it's, it's very, very reminiscent of the previous generation Varus Arising wide body for the 8.6, but uh, it just looks even better. Any doubts that I had about this new generation of, of 8.6 being inferior to the last one are completely dashed with this kit completely. I mean, the front bumper is just as nice as the Liberty Walk one. I really love it. it Maybe even a little bit more just because the, it has that really angular uh, type of a look to it. But the fenders, the way the side skirts are, this little piece right there on the front fender that comes out is just epic. The only thing I don't really like about it is maybe the wing in the back. I'm not a fan of like swan neck wings typically, and so I don't really like that. But as far as the shape of the fenders and the side skirt and the diffuser in the back, I really love it. I don't like this shade of blue on it. If it was white or, you know, some other color, maybe like the orange that we saw the Veilside 400Z. Man, that would be so cool. Man, if you got one of these cars, this is where you want to go. If you like wide bodies, you want to get one of these freaking Varus Arising. And this is a collaboration. The design was actually a collaboration between Varus and original Rundus in Japan. And so this is a full, full blown kit that you can use on the track for a show, for whatever you want to do. It's a, it's a perfect execution for this car. So GR86, the new one is just at this point, with what's on offer, you can't beat it. Varus also had this incredible Evo wagon in the in the booth. Man, just absolutely killer. I mean, not much to say besides just epic. I love love seeing that this is an actual car. This is an actual Evo wagon with the Varus wide body on it. Looks epic. Varus, of course, also had their GR Yaris on display. This is a great looking body kit. Best one on the market for the new GR Yaris. Um, crazy fast car. These GR Yaris's are no joke. Like people just love them. I would never get one myself, but man, they're cool. No doubt. And this is Varus's stock body, non-wide body offerings. Also looks amazing. Front bumper is very similar to the wide body version, but uh, if you're more of a stock body person, here you go. So here we go again. Turns out the GR86 is getting so much love. It's unbelievable. So not only did we have the Liberty Walk so clean already, then we had the Varus, both in stock body and wide body form. Now we have the Voltex wide body debuting here at Tokyo Auto Salon. And dude, I mean, how do you choose? Like, this is three for three, no doubt. This thing is so clean, it's crazy. And if I personally had to choose, it would be really tough between the Varus uh, wide body flares, because I still do like those flares and side skirts. But the Voltex front bumper, oh my god. Gosh, like out of the three, it's hard to choose, but I'd probably have to go with Voltex. The only thing I would say is that the black trim over the inlets there is a little giving me some Fu Manchu vibes. <laughs> He's kind of like the old Fu Manchu mustache type of look. Not bad at all, but man, aside from that, the shape of the lip on this and the mouth is just absolutely stunning. I also love that that inlet in the side skirt in the back there. It just looks so freaking good. Volk TE37s in gunmetal with it, with the white and the black carbon trim. It's just, 
absolutely stunning. Can't really see it from this photo here, but the hood also is a really nice double ducted hood that Voltex designed for it. So man, again, if you've got a GR86, you have no shortage of options for just absolutely incredible body kits for this car. All right, when I started this video, I said there was going to be good, there was going to be some bad, and there was going to be some ugly, and here you go. Unfortunately, it's my homies at Nissan that unveiled the new 2024 GTR, and this is what we got for the new GTR. Now, I could probably sit here and make an entirely new video about how disappointed I was when they pulled the, the cover off of this thing, but man, this is just not a way to send this thing out. Supposedly, this is going to be the last year, not only the last year of the GTR, but the last GTR with an internal combustion engine. And to do it like this on the front end of the GTR, at least the standard one and the T-Spec, it's just, man, it's a shame. So I can see what they were trying to do. They were trying to kind of reintroduce the classic type of a grill from the previous generation, the R34 and put some body lines in there to create more of a R34-esque type of an upper part portion of the front bumper, but man, it, it really misses the mark. It just doesn't fit. And this is, of course, my opinion, and I know there are some who will disagree with me, but the, this shape looks like some amateur in, in Blender trying to make, you know, a, a, a sports car front end to me. Like, this is just not okay. The rear bumper, is cool. I'm all right with that. They, they added a new body line just under the tail lights there, if you can see that. Um, I don't mind that. That's that's really cool. But the, the front end just completely ruins the GTR. It looks way too tame. This is the last generation. You got to go out crazy. You know, if you're going to do this, you have to bring it into uh, something that's really, really going to stand out. And this is like a three steps back for me on the GTR. However, I will say that the Nismo version that they also unveiled, I'm all right with this. I don't like the, the lights that they've decided to go with. And as I go back to the standard version, you can see they just kind of randomly put the, the side marker lights there on the, on the front or the DRLs, I guess they would be. It looks horrible with that. And I don't like the design of those lights. And they use those for the Nismo version as well. But the bumper design, at the very least, on the Nismo version is epic. I really like it. And the rear bumper as well looks sick on the Nismo version. So I will say the Nismo version, okay, thumbs up. But the standard version, straight up ugly, Nissan. What are you doing? This is, this is the last R35 GTR. Don't, don't do us like that. All right, guys, so that is a wrap on Tokyo Auto Salon 2023. Hope you guys enjoyed that little look and some of my opinions on what was on offer at the show. Like I said, some absolutely amazing cars there. It was great to see the new Z in so many different forms. Very excited about the development of that car and what's to come even more in the future. Great looking car so far. I especially like that veil side kit on it. And for you GR86 guys, again, like I've said, Man, this was definitely a show to see for you guys because all of the major companies came out with just bangers for that thing. So congratulations to you guys. And, uh, you know, the GTR thing, it's a bummer. But, hey, if I'm going to get one, I'm going for Nismo anyways. So I'm cool with that. The new Nismo looks great. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know it drug on a little bit, but I appreciate you sticking around. If you made it all the way to the end, Give me a hashtag made it to the end on the bottom. I appreciate it. I am really doubling down trying to get some more action on this channel for you guys. I'm going to try to kick out at least one, hopefully two videos a week moving forward as I continue to develop my car for SEMA this year. So look forward to that. I'm going to have a lot of cool stuff. I actually just picked up a new gimbal. So I'm also going to be hitting up a whole bunch of car shows this year and events, anything I can. I'm going to be going out. I'm going to try and get really good with that gimbal. It's going to be a bit of a process. I've never used one quite that high end before. So I'm going to get on practicing that right away and get out to some of these shows and hopefully get you guys some banger content. So thank you for watching this. I appreciate you guys. If you're not subscribed already, hit that subscribe button. Give me a like and a comment below. I'd really appreciate it. All right, guys. Love you all. Take care and God bless.